Hey, how's it going? Miles here at Tactile Hive. We've noticed that with a lot of our videos, we've been trying to add on top of what we've already created. So if you've been following us for the past year or so, we're always trying to do more. But what we realized over time is that a lot of our viewers are new gun owners or beginners. So not a lot actually can appreciate everything that we're putting out because the fundamentals are not there for a lot of our viewers. So what we've decided to do is create a number of different videos, how to's, so to speak, where we start from the basics. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to aim your pistol, both with an iron sight and with a red dot. This video and future videos that we put out that revolve around the fundamentals are going to give you information, or I should say enough information, so that you can use that and implement it right away without providing overwhelm. In other words, we're not gonna throw everything at you at once so that you can take these bits of information, bite-sized pieces, and be able to implement them right away. So let's get started. So I'm holding my P365, clearly an iron sight gun, so it has a rear sight and a front sight. And this is my everyday carry. It's important to learn how to aim your pistol so that you can obviously get your shots on target. So how do you do that? You may have learned or heard of two terms called sight alignment and sight picture. If you haven't, then this video is going to be perfect for you. So when we are dealing with iron sights, we need to think about what's referred to as sight alignment. That means we need to align our rear sight and our front sight so that we can get an accurate shot on target. So how do we actually align the two sights here? What we want to do is the front sight needs to be right in the middle of our rear sight as well as level with our rear sight. Some people will refer to this as equal height and equal light. When people refer to equal height, that means the front sight, the edge of the front sight, is going to be lined up with the same height of the rear sight. And then when they say equal light, when you put that front sight in between your rear sight and you look through it, okay, as you're aiming your gun, you're going to see some space on the left and right of your front sight. So what you want to ensure is the space between your front sight and your rear sight, if you were looking at it from the rear, is equal. The light that you see, the light passing through is equal. So that's why they refer to it as equal height, equal light. And that's really all there is to it when you need to line up your sights. Okay, that's referred to again as sight alignment. Now that you know how to align your sights, you also need to know how to put those properly aligned sights on top of your target. And this is where we move into sight picture. So you already have understanding of sight alignment. So now what you need to do is, where do we place those sights on the actual target? And this is where some people get confused. Some people have only learned one way in their entire life, but there are a number of different ways. And we're going to cover two. And we refer to how you place your properly aligned sights on a target as your hold, okay? So it, it falls in the, under the umbrella of sight picture, but you want to have a certain hold. Now, what do I mean by that? So your front sight has a top edge and there are two common holes. And once again, just to repeat this, for those of you who are very unfamiliar with this, the hold is going to be how I put my properly aligned sights on top of the target, whatever I want to hit. So there are two common holes. One is a center hold, the other is a combat hold. So with a center hold, what we want to do is pay attention to that front edge or the top edge of that front sight and whatever we want to hit, we want to make sure that that front edge actually cuts right through the center of it. So I'm going to put my firearm away for a second here. If I wanted to hit the center of the Tactile Hive logo here, this bullseye, then the front edge would literally cut the center of the bullseye. And that is why we call it a center hold. Now that being said, the sight alignment can't change. So we have equal height, equal light. Then we place that proper sight alignment or the, the sights properly aligned right on top of this bullseye with a center hold, okay? The front edge crossing the bullseye. Once again, that is if you have a center hold on your gun, okay? The combination of your sights and your gun, it could dictate the hold that you have. If you have a combat hold, which is another common hold for pistols, that is when your front sight is going to literally cover what you want to hit. So it's a little different. So with my Sig Sauer P365 and a lot of Sig Sauer pistols, and you'll have to check with your manufacturer, they come out of the factory with 
a certain hold. And again, with SIGs, it's a combat hold, usually a combat hold. What that means is, unlike the center hold, when I refer to or I mentioned, don't even worry about some orange dot or something that's glowing in the front sight, like completely ignore it for a center hold. Now we're, we want to pay attention to it for combat hold. Whereas with the center hold, if we wanted to hit the bullseye here, the tactical hive logo right in the center, we would use the top edge and cut right in front, right in the middle here. With a combat hold, we want to put that bright circle on your front sight on top of what you want to hit. So instead of cutting in between, right in the center of the bullseye here, we would put that dot over it. What that means is you're pretty much covering your target so you can't see your target. There are pros and cons to each. You might wonder why there are different holes, but the truth is there are. So there isn't just one. And it's interesting to find out when I talk to some people, uh, particularly people who have learned how to shoot uh, years back who are much, much older, and some of them didn't even realize, like when I talk, they don't even realize there are different holes. And what I'm talking to you about are just two common ones. So going back to the entire topic today of how to aim your pistol, we now talked about sight alignment. We talked about sight picture, how you're going to overlay the properly aligned sights on your target. Just because you do that, though, does not mean you're going to hit your target, right? You have to have good mechanics with your trigger control and a decent grip where you're not shaking around. Pretty much that means that when you pull the trigger, your sights have to be exactly where you want to shoot. So assuming you are aiming at your target and you do not disrupt the sights by a bad grip or anticipation or pulling the trigger incorrectly, you are going to hit your target. Wherever you're aiming, you're going to hit it. Some final notes though. The holes that I talked to you about, they don't really matter at close ranges. So if you're shooting five, seven, 10, 10 yards, you don't have to worry about that, whether you have a combat hold or a center hold. But it is important information as you shoot more and as you go further back, knowing your hold is going to matter a lot. Remember I said we cover just two holes. There could be more. There could be, let's say, a six o'clock hold. Some bullseye shooters will use a six o'clock hold. So that's not very common among practical shooters. And a six o'clock hold is where your front sight, the edge of the front sight, is completely below what you want to hit. But it's, again, just good to know that there are different holds out there. One last thing, as a beginner, what's going to happen is when you are looking at a target that you want to engage or shoot, you're going to be thinking about your front sight, your sight alignment and the sight picture. And what you wanna do as you're starting, you want to look at your target and then what you're going to do is as your sights get into your vision, you are going to change your focus from your target to your sights so that you can ensure that they are aligned. Then when they are aligned, then you can break your shot. As you gain more experience, you'll be, able to kind of, you'll be able to veer away from that. You can have more of a focus on your target. But if you're just starting out, focus on your target, know what you want to shoot, then change your focus to ensure that you can see good alignment with your sights and a proper sight picture. So that's how you aim your pistol using iron sights. You make sure you have proper sight alignment and then proper sight picture. So how do you overlay the properly aligned sights on your target? Now let's talk about red dot shooters, those who are using a red dot on their pistols. Fortunately, well, for red dot shooters, it's much easier. All you really have to do is put that red dot on one you wanna shoot and ensure that you do not disturb the red dot when you pull the trigger. And what you are aiming at is what you technically should hit. Now the main difference here is that when I talked about with iron sights, how you're probably gonna be looking at your target first because you need to know what you wanna shoot. Then you're gonna change focus to your sights to ensure that everything is lined up. With a red dot, you are hardly ever going to do that. Now I'll, I'll talk about, I'll go back to hardly ever in a little bit. But what you're really going to do is you're gonna look at your target and keep your focus on the target as you raise your gun, your red dot is going to disrupt your vision. It's going to get in between what you're looking at. And so when you see that red dot just superimpose over what you're shooting, then you can break the shot. You do not need to change your focus from the target to the red dot. With iron sights, you do to ensure you have a completely accurate or I should say more precise shot. Now going back to what I referred to, the vast majority of red dot shooters are going to stay target focused, meaning they're always going to have their target in crystal clear focus. They're not going to go back to look at the red dot. 
However, there might be some times when you're shooting something really far or a small target and you want to ensure that you have a very precise shot, you might change your focus from the target to just take a quick look at that red dot to ensure it's on top of exactly what you want to hit. So as I mentioned, when you're aiming a pistol with a red dot, it's extremely easy. Just put your red dot where you want to shoot and everything is going to work out if you do not disrupt the sights. Those are the wave tops to how to aim your pistol, whether you're using iron sights or a red dot. Now this assumes, okay, just keep this in mind, this assumes that your sights, your iron sights or your red dot are zeroed. So if you're unfamiliar with that term, having your sights or your red dot zeroed, it basically means that you're ensuring that whatever your point of aim is, okay, whatever you're aiming at with your red dot or your iron sights, your point of impact will be the same. They will match. And that is the process of zeroing your pistol. So again, this video assumes that your iron sights or your red dot are already zeroed. Now, if you're not sure how to zero your pistol or how to check, we'll have another video about that. But assuming you are zeroed, this is how you aim your pistol. So hope you guys like that video. If you wanna see more videos like this, please like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next one.